All right, everyone, welcome back again to more Fate Stay Night. This is it, actually. We are going to finally access the last episode. This is actually one of the few parts of the game I never really got to see because uh, when I first played this in the, what, mid-2000s, I never really got all the endings. So I always missed out on this last episode. And this will be the first time I'll be experiencing it with all of you guys. So I'm excited. This is the final uh, frontier of this game, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it finally all ends and how it all comes together so let's see it through clang a beautiful sound that light only that sound was something he would never forget all his life the sound of the bell that announces the commencement of battle. Her figure that made even the rough clanging of armor sound beautiful. That voice is still clear. The image wears away, but the sound is still etched clearly into his heart. Shokan你従い参上した。これより我が剣はあなたと共にあり、あなたの運命は私と共にある。ここに契約は完了した。Yes, the contract was complete. She chose him to become her master. And he swore to help her with all his might. The moonlight still lights up the darkness. As if following the knight's example, the shed again falls silent. Each time he remembers it, he murmurs that name to himself. He has completely forgotten that blue light. The golden hair is shown in the moonlight. In his final years, on the verge of a nap, suddenly he remembers that nostalgic sword. He cannot recall that correct order. His memories are distant and hazy, and all of his feelings from then are long in the past now. This is a story of the past. The story of him and her, only 15 days long, concerning a certain grail. At that time, I was only dead. I didn't have to die. I'll tell you about it. But I'll tell you about it. We're, we're reliving precious moments here. I like it. Deskara, so na ningen ga iru to shitara, so no jinbutsu no naimen wa doko ka ketsuraku shiteimasu. その決断を抱えたまま進んではシロ
勝てないって分かっていながら勝とうとするその結果が自分の死でも構わないなぜならあんたの中ではどうしてか知らないけど自分より他人の方が大切だからよWith faint consciousness, he reached out for no reason. He didn't reach out to seek help. He just thought the sky was a long way away. In his last moments, that's what he thought. That c o l d e d is r e a l l y She and her sword were one. The sword from the stone that chose the king. The brilliance of the sword that decided her fate was her own brilliance. Her soul must still be on the battlefield before daybreak. Resting her body in the wind under the indigo blue sky, she just gazed into the distance. A king is not human. One cannot protect the people with human emotions. セイバーデートってのはね要するに相引きのことなのシロは遊びに行くって言うけどつまるところ男の子が好きな女の子にアピールするチャンスってわけあ,あ But there were also things like this. Fortunately, the sky was very high and the wind was very cool. Even now, these clear blue memories live inside her heart. アーサー王の目的は聖杯の入手ですそれが叶おうとも私はアルトリアに戻ることはないでしょう私の望みは初めから一つだけ剣を手にした時からこの誓いは永遠に変わらないのですから四郎なら。That was a scene from many years ago. So, I'll tell you to remind me. Kitchen to Kanga at a home. Yeah. She nodded firmly, even when shown her future. Are you really okay with that? The Magus asked.
多くの人が笑っていましたそれはきっと間違いではないと思います The girl only wanted to protect everyone. But to do so, she had to throw away the emotion of wanting to protect people. Because one cannot protect the country as king if one has a human heart. She accepted it and pulled out the sword. She accepted it and swore to live as a king. So her heart would not change no matter how many times she was abandoned, feared, or betrayed. She threw away her human heart. Because the young girl wanted to protect in exchange for it. Who would ever know of such a sublime oath? She chose to fight, no matter what the future may hold. Even so, she still chose to fight. Even if there was inevitable, solitary ruin waiting at the end. <laughs> It is a living hell that's somehow familiar. No matter how much they ask, he cannot ascend. All he can do is end it for them. He can only fix the contradiction of the living dead. He can only make the creator of this hell atone for his sins. The priest said this, the truth behind 10 years ago, that someone with a malicious intent touched the grail. The cruel reality that nobody could be saved. Sad events, miserable deaths, a disaster that has already occurred. Those things cannot be taken back. A, super, a superhero only exists to strain out what has already happened. He can't stand their stares. He wants to run away from it all. He has no way to save them. He can only listen and has no miracle to grant them. He doesn't have enough power to deny that man's claim that a superhero is only so strong. I have no definite adversary. I never wished anything for myself. Then, if, if I had a miracle that could save them, would I use it? He stares straight at the dead corpses, and clenching his teeth, rejects them. Things lost will never return. His figure hurts her so much. What did she tell him? That she could not start a new life? She continued to refuse him, saying that she had a duty as king. <sighs> she remembers the oath that she took a long time ago. Something she had kept to herself. She decided to fight. Even if it meant losing everything and being loathed by everyone. The oath of the king who still chose to fight. Yes, everything was there. Her pride as a knight, and her oath as the king. Even the dream the girl Atoria wished for.
trust and love for him that has never wavered. Not herself as king, but the girl who could never protect anything in the end wholeheartedly became his sword. This was such an epic moment too. The morning sun rises. The halted wind begins again. A goat that seems to last forever. In it. Saigoni. She says in a voice filled with determination. <sighs> he replies like always with his best bluff. She's facing him. She looks straight at him and in a voice without regret. Shiro. She says those words. Wind blows. He closes his blinded eyes and opens them again. There's no surprise. He saw this coming. That their parting would be like this. An open field filled his eyes. As the wind blew, the night disappeared. Just as she appeared, leaving no trace. <sighs> there are no regrets in his voice. He squints at the rising sun, keeping everything he lost close to his heart. He stares at the horizon, wishing never to forget, and for it to never fade away. A distant land glowing in sunlight, resembling the golden field she ran through. Realta Nua. This isn't a story to be told to someone. It's a small wish, like one made upon a star. It was a long journey, the time spent, the ideals pursued, and the life he tried to achieve must have been quite a burden. No matter how far he walked, the distance did not close. Without rest, without giving up, without hesitation, with strained eyes, he walked down that long road. His journey continued on and on, endlessly. The reason why is very simple. Where should he go? What should he do? in order to stop his footsteps. He should have decided those answers at the very beginning, but he apparently had not. Nothing is indestructible. No matter how durable a machine is, it will slowly wear away with use. Machines, bodies, and spirits are all alike in this manner. Everything will be damaged in time. Every time one looks at something, its color fades a little more. Therefore, even his heart, which did not recognize anything as painful, would perhaps finally notice after many years of repetition. Even if your actions are meaningful, in the end, you yourself are worthless. Hope and despair are inseparable. Noble ideals become tiring duties, and in the end, a sordid obsession. What people idolize in childhood becomes a mundane reality, and though they may look back on it, they lose that respect. That is the correct mentality for anyone that's human. But because he was not correct, 
He carefully locked away his heart that could feel pain. His heart of iron was proof that he was a man of tin, like this long journey could continue. In exchange, he felt less pleasure, but fortunately he was not a greedy man, and he was happy to be rewarded once in a while. He yearned for something beautiful. He saw many people in towns. Beautiful things existed everywhere, but he could not encounter the starlight he had parted with on that day. The reason his journey did not end was likely not because he lacked a goal, it was because he had not found what he was really looking for. But it was a satisfying life. It was a long dream. The curse upon her, the ideal she offered up, and the remaining end must have been quite heavy. No matter how long she slept, she did not awaken once. Not moving, not refusing, not wishing, while calmly taking deep breaths. She slept through that long dream. The duty of the king has not ended. In order to fulfill that promise, the king could not return to the time before the sword even in death. Time passed, the country prospered, and the people changed. Even if there was no longer anyone who desired a noble king, that oath remained. After all, in order to make it so, she had been entrusted with many lies. However, however the dream she caught glimpses of was a sad one. She saw flashes of scenery from the depths of sleep. She wanted at least the voice of her heart to reach the lonely travels of the man who was now very far away. He may have stowed away his humanity and become a machine that merely repeated the same thing. His pain not have been noticed by anyone. But I was there, and I know his strength. However, she had an eternal promise. If the past was unchangeable, then it truly was eternal. The king was eternally bound by her past oath and resolution. She herself was the one who would least get forgive the act of returning to the way she was before pulling out the sword. But she wanted to meet him. Even if she slept for eternity, she wanted him to hear her voice. The Magus spoke to her. He told her that her wish was impossible. ひどく長い時間耐え抜かないといけないそれほら言いにくいけど望むべきではない夢物語だろ The Magus asked her. It was impossible whether or not it could come true and whether or not she could keep waiting for it, unrelated to the duty of the king. ああ。君は So the Magus says, It is the same as the time when she took up the sword. Back then, it was with a sneer at the suffering that was likely to come. And now, a smile at the future that may be granted. There was no point in replying. All that mattered was whether the girl who had not yet taken up the sword would wish or not. Either way, she did not have the power to grant it. In that case, how was it any different from wishing upon a star? でも、それが本当にいいことなのかはまた別の話だ。アルトリア、時代も人も変わっている。あの頃のままなのは君だけだ。夢は夢のままの方が美しい。君はこのまま。
死んだように眠っている方が楽でいいそれでも、no reply is necessary. Even if it's not put into words, this wish alone will not disappear. On the contrary, that alone is enough. Because until that day, when not visited by anyone, not sought by anyone in the end, the image of the king disappears from the imagination of the people. She will endure this slumber forevermore with this warm wish as a dream to nourish her. In the end, He could not change his way of living, and she was never rewarded. And then, for both him and her, a long time passed. Suddenly, eyes opened. How far has he walked? He chose to walk only to desolate lands, but after exiting a deep forest, he finds himself standing in a familiar grassy plain. He isn't certain about the place. How many months and years has it been since then? And how far of a distance has he gone since then? It is all unclear now. He lowers his burden from his shoulders and rests his tense body. Ah, he thought he would walk forever. But it seems this is the end of his journey. The view is clear and wide. The wind that rustles the grass and ties the bonds that were twined so heavily around them. His heart calmly returns to the time with each step. He stares at the endless blue sky, thinking about the unspoken promise. It was the delusion of the young, a wish that was akin to a bluff. They had looked at the same sky and felt the same thing. So if he pursued it, it would definitely come true. In his hometown, that is what he thought. Then, she wakes from her dream as well. She holds on to her wish as she looks up at the sky. She notices the direction of the wind has changed and holds back the tears that threaten to spill. Yes, a different wind has begun to blow through this once unchanging plain. She continues to wait for her visitor as if praying. Farewell is all she says. She thanks the small hope that she had only wished for until now. Without realizing, he hurries forward. His breathing quickens slightly. Unbelievable. How many years has it been since he's been short of breath? It's as if he's gone back to the time when he was still young and inexperienced. No, but just because he's gained experience doesn't mean he's an adult. He laughs at himself. Come to think of it, how long has she wished to the sky? I want to meet him. I want to meet him. If it was possible just once more, she wanted to hold that way of life in her arms and make sure of what she had yearned for. Unconsciously, her heartbeat speeds up. Still, she does not move from the place. She cannot bring herself to spoil his role. She truly wants to break into a run, but just like then, she chooses to wait for his words. But there is some unease as well. This wish, this miracle, should it really be brought back? He is not who he was back then. His heart and body have worn down just as she had grieved. He has not always been thinking of this scene either. It was not attachment. He simply did not forget. He has only held on to this gradually fading memory of the past. So, even if it ends as a dream, he still has his expected despair and the slightest hope, so. No, he cannot deceive himself any longer. Something he has only remembered in words revives itself vividly in his mind. That which he has stowed carefully away begins to move once more. Familiar blood runs through his thin heart. A golden land. 
In the home of the woman he parted with long ago, his heart has finally caught up with him. Many emotions well up, but only one phrase rises to his throat. How much they have wanted to meet and how long she have waited are meaningless now. Yes. In the end, he was not able to change his way of living. And in the same way, she was not rewarded. But... After protecting until the end, there was something waiting for him. Something precious was left at the end of his life. He retrieved something more important. It's fortunate that he has stored it within himself. His smile is as simple as a boy's, just as it once was. The words he spoke are truly the same as back then. It's as if that day is about to continue. Her footsteps on the ground are light. The girl smiles as if falling apart. And so the dream announces its end. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy! They met each other again. It took forever, but it finally happened. Following the star, traveling to the star. Moving forward and seeing others off. Losing many things and creating many things. At the end of it all, incomparable to the immense amount of time spent, is a tiny, tiny fragment. How very dazzling. He looks at the radiance in the small palm, extracted with great pain, so bright as to burn the eye. And so, they meet at the end of a long road. So ends the journey of the man who yearned after the star. From now on, he and she will begin another long, long story. And in the end, this world will keep on turning so that he may become someone's star once again. The storyteller may fall silent, the music may cease, but the story will not end. Be it tragedy or comedy, as long as there is applause, the story will not end. It is just like the multitude of human lives. Warm blessings to we who were not rewarded and who are still on our way, our travels continue on. All right, well, guys, that was it. That was the ending to the last episode, and what a beautiful ending that was. It it made up for all the routes that we saw so far. We saw all of Fate, Unlimited Blade Works, Heaven's Feel, and it feels like that long journey of the parting between Shiro and Saber finally, you know, came into fruition. Like, it took forever. Like, it was, I think it was Merlin that was talking to Saber, or, you know, a Magus of sorts, but I'm pretty sure it was Merlin telling her that at the end of the day it would be up to both of them to continue for Saber wishing he would show up and for Shiro to continue pursuing the dream of meeting her throughout his whole lifetimes and they finally made it in uh, I believe that's Avalon that was oh my god you know guys for what it's worth I I almost teared up I was trying really hard to read everything as perfectly as I could and then once we made it to Avalon and there was no means of me controlling the text, I was like, oh god, I hope I read everything perfectly without like messing up, you know. But it turned out alright and I'm glad I played this game. Like again guys, I played it before, but I finally got to experience it completely now with everything including the last episode. Thank you all for joining me on this one. It was a blast. Thank you for all the love and support. And if anything else, guys, as usual, there will be other visual novels to come. And when it does happen, look forward to it. So if anything else, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you again. <laughs>